Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and welcome to Show and Tell 60 something. <laughs> it's like 63, 64, somewhere in there. Um, I forgot to bring my notebook down. I've been having a morning. Uh, it's one of those. Yeah, sorry. I'm getting a perspiration glare from my light up there. I'm a little muggy now. I've been running all over the house trying to get things ready to film. and yeah. So, you guys, nothing really interesting going on here. Troy had to go to the plant uh, at the beginning of the week. And I pretty much sat here and did normal household stuff, did some crafting. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw my adventures yesterday. We'll discuss some of that today. I did, however, want to circle back to my previous show and tell where I was telling you guys about the mushroom color sweater that I did. I do still have it. And this is what it looks like. Now, bear in mind, this was made like in my first year knitting. But I told you, you know, always block out your sleeves to the recommended size or when you sew it shut, you know, things are going to be too tight. I had already seamed this. So I ended up having to add extra fabric in the underarm area to expand that seam. It's very poorly ends woven in. It's, uh, you know, far from perfect, but I was really, really proud of this sweater. I loved wearing it. I wore the daylights out of it and it didn't, you know, I washed it and dried it in the washing machine and it really didn't hold up poorly at all. So I was, you know, very, I'm very pleased, but I do still have it. It was in a bag in the guest room. So I thought I'd pull that out. I was looking for something else and found that instead. Um, I am going to film another video today talking about some of my older whips that I was really proud of in the same vein of this. They probably aren't perfect, but I was really, really proud of them when I made them. And uh, they're all, I still think, good. There, there are some errors, but oh, that is driving me nuts. I'm trying to wear my glasses more often. I've been getting eye strain headaches. I'm spending too much time going back and forth at different distances. And it's really messing with my astigmatism. Which is why you only see me wear my glasses sometimes, not all the time. Um, finished objects. Or my basket of stuff. This is the... Craftsy basket that I made last year. I keep this on the Rascog cart in the office. And as I finish things, I just drop it in the basket. That way, everything is together and I can bring it downstairs. First off, I want to thank the Whispering Stitcher for her card. I told you guys I got an Easter card and I totally kept forgetting to share it with you guys. So I did, did remember to pull that. I, however, left Made by Marsha Mom's card either in my car or in my purse. I went to go to the grocery store the other day and my masks have vanished out of my car. So the rest of the day, as I was out running errands and stuff and bringing things into the house, I was a little discombobulated because I know I left two masks in the car on my passenger seat and there are nowhere in the car. And that means somebody got up in my driveway and stole my mask. Because that's the only place my car's been, is the driveway. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't like the mask to begin with. But, still, dude, bra, really? So, hopefully this weekend I'll sit down and make some pretty masks that I actually like and actually fit my face. I don't have a huge face from here to here, but these masks are meant to fit, like, men. And even on the largest loop. Like every time you breathe in, everything like goes into your nose and mouth. It's just way too tight. Not as advertised. So my only finished object this week is an ancient finished object. This is a languishing whip and it's got dust in it because it's been sitting in a basket for, for so long. Um, so this is my texture wrap. Oop, that's the back. I have a couple ends left to weave in. I've got to go back through the shawl and figure out how I had the ends woven in. But it's like mm, 
Six feet, maybe. Let's fold it in half. It might be longer than six feet. Um, so that's, well, do it this way. No, that's right at six feet. Yeah. So it's a huge, long, rectangular wrap. I love the way the texture of this yarn worked up. It's one of those um, thin to slubby yarns. There's one of my tails. Uh, it's made that way. Uh, I actually have it in lavender, mint green, and raspberry. And I have a lot of the lavender specifically. So this was supposed to be a test run to see how I liked working with the yarn. And it needs to go back upstairs. Specifically so... I knew whether or not I wanted to commit to making this sweater. Um, this is Peyton's Venus. Each ball is 50 grams. It's 55% cotton, 40% acrylic, and 5% nylon made in Turkey. This is the color turquoise. Uh, yeah, liked working with it. Still like the way the sweater looks. So I will probably try to make one of those and have it done by the end of the summer. I'm so backlogged on projects right now. It's not even funny. Um, so you can tell, like, it's just been a day. Um, Saturday, my video for inter my unboxing of month one of interlacements will go up. And let's see, old objects will probably go up on Tuesday. Show and tell will be Thursday. I have the tracking for the new Mountain Meadow wool box, so that will probably be next Saturday. I'm trying not, once again, to like bombard you guys with videos, but I do have a lot of things I want to share with you guys. So anyway, that's the only finished object that I have as far as what I knitted and crocheted. I do have other finished objects, though. Once again. Oh, and just to point out, if you follow me on Instagram, it did all come off. Forgive the broken fingernails and stuff, but it did all come off. And this was the offender. So I dyed a sock blank yesterday. And, well, it doesn't look like much on here. I mean, it kind of looks like a muddy mess. Which I kind of like. Like, don't get me wrong. Um. Oh, here. You, you can see what the yarn actually looks like as it comes out. So... Looking forward to working with that. That will be a pair of socks. I did, uh, that's the only sock blank, dyeable sock blank that I have. I did want to play with a sock blank of my own before I break into my Leading Men Fiber Arts, Durian Dye Works, or um, I have one other one up there. And I can't remember who that's from. It's another independent uh, dyer sock blank though. But um that's what messed up my hand so bad yesterday. <clears throat> so. Everything was done. Differently, except for these two skeins. So this was playing with one of those Easter egg kits where you like make the foam, put the dye on top of it and you roll the eggs through it. Um, what I did is I made the foam, put the dye on top of it, lightly marbleized it, not heavily wiggled the sock blank down into it and then used my hands to kind of manipulate it to pick up all the rest of the dye around the pan and i did use the um bottom of a roasting pan to do that i've got two of these they're everything is still just damp except for the sock blank i've got two hanks of this and i tied off extra ties and i'm still ended up with a mess on these hanks all my hanks ended up kind of wonky um so i took these put it into the dye bath as a hank in wilton violet pulled it out let it cool off to where i could touch it retwisted it dumped it into teal and i still had i, I almost stopped there i really did almost stop there because that was really spectacular, but I had so much leftover dye in that pan. Um, and the, the these two hanks were just not taking any more color after a certain point. Um, I had to grab a yarn mop and yeah. So I knew the purple had, or the teal had set and the purple had set. 
in the pot, but they just literally would not take any more color. Um, so when I put it back in the third time with the white spots, I decided to leave it open and put pink in, like a very, very soft wash of pink. So it's actually not broken violet. That is actually the pink. And by reheating it with that pink, it kind of created much more of a watercolor effect instead of the very, very um, distinct color that we had with the teal and the purple on its own. But you still have flashes of just the straight teal and the straight purple in there with that almost glazing of the pink. Uh, so I'm really happy with how these turned out. I dyed these specifically for me. I was wanting to do a hat and scarf set in these colors because once again, I mean, how pretty did that turn out? I am so happy with how that turned out. I've still got to hang them back up after this. So I've got to keep them as untangled as possible. Get something making noise upstairs again. Anyway, so this is the dye mop from doing those two hanks. This is where I pulled up the rest of the purple color. This is where I pulled up the rest of the teal. And I mean, you can see it, it really was not that much color left in there for either one of those. And then when I dumped those into the pink, I just dropped this in with it too. So it did actually create some bleeding. So we were going to have some bleeding when I went to go put it in. But as the color released from those, it led into this, which is pretty awesome. And this will be gifted. I know who this is going to. But I really love how that turned out color-wise. Next one. <laughs> so if you remember my last dyeing adventure, I tried taking a cake of sock yarn and putting the dye pellets into it. But the problem I had is the inside got hypersaturated and the outside got really muddy. And it really had no flow between the colors. So a friend of mine, when I did those, that, that was her favorite one. I thought the green one would be her favorite, but she said that was her favorite. So I sent that to her and decided to re-attempt this dye project. Except this time, I used a damp cake. I didn't hypersaturate it and soak it for a long time. I used a damp cake, put the pellets in, put it in the crock pot, and... We've got far more what I was expecting. There is definitely runoff color on this side. This was the outer part of the cake. But I wanted this confetti sprinkles. And on the inside side, you have this beautiful pink and green that then starts fading into all these confettis. And then on the outside, you have this beautiful confetti green. And I'm thinking about doing a shawl with this that starts with the pink and green section down there, the little rosy looking speckles and have it, you know, one of those um, half moon kind of scarf shawls. So it will end with a couple of rows of just this and you'll see it go from the very, very soft all to the more pigmented, saturated speckles into this section. So that I'm very happy with how it turned out still wet. But I had a genius idea. As that was starting to cook in the crock pot, I noticed I was getting color bleed outside of it. So I was going to end up with a super, super muddy mess on the outside again and not know what to do with it. So I took my original dye mop and dropped it in the crock pot around it. So the dye mop could mop up all the color that was coming out of the cake. And what we ended up with was this. So we've got a lot of these. I really love this gold color that popped up over here. But we have some of the red, the green. We've got this almost peachy color here. And it's still... And you can tell where it's like the lime green and the teal that were on the outside. But yeah, 
very, very happy with how that turned out. And I know what I'm going to make with this and who the gift is going to go to in the end. Really like how that turned out. I need to be more conscientious of putting the greens and blues towards the inside of the cake and the reds reds and yellows towards the outside of the cake because the green seem to be what bleed out so bad. It takes them much longer to adhere for some reason. Um, I thought it was just red that took forever in three years, but the greens doing this in particular seem to take a lot longer. So that is my second dye mop. And that is everything I dyed just 600 grams of yarn. And the only thing dry is my sock blank. So I don't know, um, I'm still working on my Fish Lips Kiss with the Knit Crate Sock Yarn. So I haven't, uh, I don't have needles free to work on this yet. But I'm very excited to work on this. I really like how this is working out. I have two more hanks that I know I want to dye, but it'll probably be next week before I get around to it. So we'll see how those work out. So gifts. I get a present in the mail from my friend Sandra. She gets darn good yarn, obviously. And there's always, you know, when you do a mystery box like that, you never know which months you're going to really like and which months you aren't. So this was two months where she was just like, yeah, I'm not going to use that. So this one is DK weight herbal dyed recycled silk yarn in rose. And I love that. I love it, love it, love it. And there's 120 yards in that. And then the other one she sent me is India's Linen Yarn. 100% linen, double ply, made in India. Uh, each skein is 100 grams and contains 350 yards. So there's that one. It is very, very fine linen. It is stiff like you expect linen to feel. However, my experience with linen has always been that it softens up significantly as you wash it and use it and wear it. Oh, that got that like totally wrapped around it so I can't pull the hank out completely, but I really like it. And it's obvious she already aired these out before she sent them, which is nice. It took me a while. My first box was really bad with them as far as the smell goes. My next couple weren't so bad. They weren't quite as strong. Um, but it came out easily. I mean, it wasn't a, wasn't no thing. Anyway, she also sent me some teas. So she sent me hibiscus sorrel, which she knows I love. I love this tea. And, oh, chamomile anise. I'll be G rated, not um, cheer up my steps and calls it. And these are the Harney and Son Cherry Blossom tea bags. I was good and waited. One of these will be going in my teacup next. Oh, it smells so good. I've been dying to try it. She keeps saying I'm going to love it. I haven't had it before. And it's been sold out everywhere I've gone to look. Oh, she did send me one of the darn good yarn pattern books to go with these. So this was the pattern for the coral. It was headbands. And of course, the crochet one's on the pattern page, and so is the knit one. Okay. So that's the knit pattern. And that's the crochet pattern. Oh, that is. Something nice and special there. So we got gifts, we got finished objects, and the final thing is a whip. I don't generally share a whole lot of whips on here, but this one I'm particularly just pleased with. I told you guys about it last week. It is Katie and the Squid's Squid Dance Wrap, and I said I fixed it. <laughs> if you watch the videos, not just listen like I do, um, you saw where I flashed it up and corrected myself that it's KT in the squid's pattern, not Muffy in the squid. 
I follow both on Instagram, but I think Mafia and the Squid had just done a big release of yarn and I had them on my brains. But, so first off, let me show you the wrap so far. So this is the, the working end down here. Um, so this is color one, color two, color three. So this is a Yuru yarn. I think it's from earlier this year. I think it's from the release where they did Moonstone or Blood Moon and something else. Um, this is Hidden Pool. Oh, there is like all kinds of weird noises coming from upstairs. I think they must be um, mowing and weed eating out front because I can hear it coming from down the stairs. Really weird. Anyway, so I've got that one stored in my monkey wrench bag from T Doddles. It's just much easier to store these in separate little pouches and I can lift the whole thing up because I know the cakes are going to start collapsing. Color one has its little label in here. Um, this is from DeMeo, DeMeo Fibers. This is Sparkle Chic Cotton Candy. Uh, Superwash Wool, 25% nylon, 5% Stellina. And that's the cotton candy is the colorway. Don't know how long that's been in my stash. I don't, I think it's been less than a year because I went on a huge Etsy, <laughs> huge Etsy buying spree last year. Like I said, in 2019, I replaced everything I used in 2018, but I replaced it with stuff I was truly excited by. Huge Etsy buying spree. And color number two is this gorgeous purple monstrosity. It is, okay, so it is a bright color. It is showing up brighter on camera. I don't know why, whatever the blue color is that's in like the Wilton Violet kind of color. I don't know if that's what they used, but that shade of blue, that number blue that's in that purple always makes everything like set off real bright in my camera. Um, this is Night Sky by Nanette Wake Studios, Fingering Weight, Superwash Merino, Cashmere, and Nylon. Super, super yummy. Oh, and I forgot to show you. This one is in this month's, this past month's Tea Doddles bag, maker, mini maker bag of the month. And this one is, I cannot remember the seller of this. I got a, I don't even remember which yarn came with it. Oh, goodness. This came, I bought the bag and she sent me the yarn for free. Oh, I can't remember who that was now. Oh, shoot. I can't remember who that is. Yeah, so it's a little, little flamingo bag. So, these are actually what's... <laughs> This and my socks are what have been taking up most of my time recently. I uh, really need to get to work catching up on my subscription box stuff. But I've been very excited about working on these and I've been enjoying my socks. Um, and also that teal wrap that I showed you at the beginning, um, that was a languishing whip. I think I started it 18 months ago, maybe. And when I found that sitting in my bedroom in a basket, I was like, let's just go ahead and finish that. Cause all I had to do was close up. It's knit on the bias. And so I just needed to close up a corner. The original pattern that I kind of got the shaping from called for 75 stitches. I'm pretty sure I extended that to like 105 stitches. Cause that thing is wide and it took me forever. So the decreasing for the corner is, Slip one, knit two together, knit across to the last three, knit two together, knit one. Then it's uh, purling back across on the other side. Let me just tell you. <laughs> that took a lot longer than I thought it should have. I thought when I picked that up, it would take me like five minutes to finish that. 
No, <laughs> that is not how that worked out. It probably took me like, I worked on it. I finished it this morning and worked on it for about an hour and a half. I worked on it for about an hour and a half yesterday. Or yesterday evening. I worked on it for about two hours yesterday morning. I worked on it Monday for about three hours just to close that corner. Yeah. So anyway, that is everything I had to show you this week for show and tell. If you have any questions, as always, please comment. You can find me on Instagram. You can send me PMs on Instagram. You can send me an email. All that information is down below in the description box. Um, I will link Kimnet's tutorials, which is how I learned how to dye yarn. I will link her down below. I will link the link for the KT and the Squid wrap. And if I can find the stores that I ordered those two from, I will put those on there too. Other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. This will hopefully go up tonight. I am having some technical issues getting videos from camera to computer. So hopefully that won't take up too much of my time this afternoon and I will be able to get this uploaded tonight. Um, other than that, take care and I will see you guys real soon. Love you guys.